Hello everyone, welcome today to my YouTube channel. For some days now, I've not posted any opportunity online. The reason is not far-fetched. I am a lecturer and I have to attend to lecturing activities in the school where I lecture. At my free time, I do videos and provide information for, for you to benefit from. During this time, I'm starting a series on cashew farming and cashew processing and the sales of cashew and the export of cashew and cashew nuts. It is, it's, it's going to be a great time. So I want you to hang on. I'm creating a new playlist for cashew. I'm going to take time to, to diagnose and to, to go to a low down of cashew. So let us go and let's get into that immediately now. I'm starting with the first video today. After that, I'll drop the next videos over the couple of days and weeks and months and years. If you can go into cashew production, what it takes is minimal, but the return is high. Do you look at do you look at the demand for cashew not in the international market? Rise up and let us go into the production of cashew together. I welcome you again. I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not subscribed. I want you to like this video and like my other videos. I have videos talking about ice block, videos talking about egg production, videos talking about so many other opportunities, both online and offline. I'm delving more into a culture these days, and you have to make it and succeed from it. So I'm going to continue after this break. You're welcome. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. As said earlier, I'm looking at step-by-step -step guide to starting a cashew farm in Nigeria step-by-step -step guide to starting cashew farming in Nigeria. You may never realize how profitable the cashew farming industry is until you get involved in it or get closer to a dealer. I have been involved in it and I've been close, very close to a dealers. And I've been close to families that have cashew farms and I've seen what they share every time they make a sale. Nigeria is a country Profiting handsomely from cashew exports. According to Cashew Association, Nigeria is currently Africa's sixth largest producer of cashew nuts. That is, in all over Africa, Nigeria is the sixth producer of cashew, just like crude oil. Nigeria is ranking behind Ivory Coast, Tanzania, Burkina Faso, Mozambique, and Ghana. Ogumosho in Oyo State is said to have the best cashew soil and climate in Nigeria, as well as the highest quality cashew nuts. According to the Vietnam Cashew Association, Vietnam has retained its position as the world's leading producer and export of cashew nuts all over the world. That is, Vietnam is number one. Processing or roasting cashews makes more money than selling them raw. So if you sell your cashew raw, you make less money. But if you process it, and then um, you're going to have more money. The ratio is 1 to 10. So if you just put, you sell your cashew raw, you may get 1. If you now sell it processed or roasted, you're going to get 10 times what you're getting if you sell it raw. Nigeria should stop selling raw cashew or I can also say Nigerians, you that are selling raw cashew should stop selling raw cashew. So what do you do? You should instead process or roast your cashew to take advantage of the high cost of exporting the nuts. The cost of exporting cashew nuts is high, so take advantage of that privilege. Nigeria needs to export roughly 500,000 tons of raw cashew to become the second largest exporter. We are far short of this goal. And this is where you, this is where you as an agricultural investor or entrepreneur, this is where you watching this video and looking for opportunity may contribute to the achievement of this goal. People may be saying, ah, people are many in there. You are many there. You can see now people are not many there. We have a lot of ground to be covered. We need roughly 500,000 tons of raw cashew to become the second largest in Africa. So if you go to cashew farming, cashew production, you are going to add to that and you are going to be moving closer. But as it is now, you are far from being the second. Do you consider 
agriculture to be a project or a business. Agriculture is a large-scale enterprise and it is not just a project. I'd like to talk to walk you through a step-by-step -step process for starting a cashew farm in Nigeria or anywhere. I want to take you through a step-by-step -step process of starting a cashew business. The enterprise is not a get-rich-quick scheme. So if you are looking to get rich quick, ah, within one year, please forget about it. But it takes three years to create, to create a hit. But it is well worth the wait. It necessitates a significant investment in both planting and harvesting. When you build a house, you don't make your profit in one year, in two years, in three years, in four years, even in five years. But you know the house belongs to you. People keep paying rent over time, over time, over time. And then you can realize your money. Now, I want to take you through the nitty gritty of cashew farming. The first thing you need to do is to prepare the land. So you prepare your land, land preparation. You purchase a piece of land. I would not recommend leasing because it is a long term investment. Don't lease the land. You may lease the land for five years, for 10 years, after 10 years, and you are into the team proper. Do you know how the land comes and say you want, to, you want to use this land? What do you do? This happens to people who go into school uh, business. Then they start a school, rented apartment, they lease apartment. After one year, two years, they pay for two rent. The school is booming. Do you know of the land or do you know of the apartment comes and say, I want to use my land? Then they have to go and move the school to another place. The owner may start a school there. And people have known the place to be a place of school. People will, some of your students will still be there. So based on this, also for cash, you get your own piece of land. So I got a piece of land in the hamlet, very far in the bush, in the village or outskirts of any city and secure it with the proper paperwork. The ideal soil to utilize is laterite -right rich sand, cut down shrubs and trees as well as grasses. Machines are used to plow and level the soil. If the nutrition level is low, combine the sand with animal feces. Combine if the fertilizer if the soil is not fertile, combine with it animal feces. You can invite professionals that can help you to look at the soil tab. They will just charge you a minimum amount and they will look at it for you. But the first test, the soil to determine its nutrient content. Cashew may be grown in both wet and dry tropics. So cashews are grown in the tropics and they can be grown in both the wet and in the dry places. What, let's go now to the planting of the cashew. Cashew seed planting is just as simple as coffee and oil palm seed planting. As a result, it is recommended that you purchase seedlings that have already sprouted from a reputable nursery with a diverse range of species. Seedlings from propagated plants take little three years to mature, whereas seedlings from direct seeding require five years to mature. Now, you also choose grafted cashews for commercial application. Use pods or plant directly into a prepared bed if you wish to do it yourself in a two to three centimeter deep hole, place two to three seeds of cashew. Then you irrigate the nursery every day and the seed will sprout in four to eight days. Make use of fresh seeds. The viability period lasts from the first day to four months, after which time the viability begins to decline. For three days, dry the seeds in the sun. The next day, soak them in water overnight before planting them. The standard spacing is 6 meters um, to 9 meters. A hectare of 8 meters by 5 meters will yield 100 seedlings. A hectare of 7.5 meters by 7.5 meters will yield 175 seedlings of your cashew, while 8 meters to 8 meters will yield, uh, yield 156 per hectare. Before the cashew tree takes over the farm, you can intercrop with cassava, plantain, pineapple, melon, watermelon, sugarcane, and other crops. So before the cashew, you know you have spaced the cashew when you are planting. And now, but the trees have not, have not grown yet, so there will be spacing. So all the space around one cashew and the other, you can plant other crops there that are not perennial. You plant them there. That may be annual. You can plant maize in between. 
you can plant okra you can plant other plants in between so when the cashew have taken its place those plants naturally will go away so instead of just weeding and weeding the plant as the cashew is still growing you can be harvesting those things and as you're harvesting them you are farming in the place and you're making your profit already now let's talk about fertilization of the cashew plant you fertilize with nitrogen phosphorus and zinc cashew crops require nutrients at all stages of development in order to grow quickly and produce high quality foods fertilizer fertilize them during the growing stage as well as during the fruiting and flowering stages once a year apply 15 kg of farmyard manure to a mature cashew tree most people now are into uh, farming of layers of grillers they produce waste of this animal you can go and get it for free or you can pay a very small amount and get it use it to fertilize your cashew farm now irrigation you have to irrigate your cashew farm during the dry season or when there is a drought during the wet season water your plants adequately and on a regular basis if you want them to produce more fruits water the plants sparingly during the rainy season if i don't rain season you don't need to water the cashew plant but irrigate them once a week or twice a week during the dry season in cashew farming a temperature of 25 degrees c to 30 degrees c is ideal for optimum growth every day six hours of direct sunlight are required if you grow them in the shade they will not produce fruit so you have to allow them to have sunlight let me talk to you about the mulching of the cashew plant and the pruning of the cashew uh, cashew farm mulching and pruning in cashew farming <coughs> beg your pardon cashew plants are pruned in the same way that hibiscus plants are <coughs> entangled branches the branches are entangled are cut off overcrowded areas are removed and clean true branches are added if you want to the branches are pruned and they are made to be the way they ought to be so it's important that you cut the branches and then you prune the branches and um, you make sure that nothing is on on it that will disturb it so you mulch your um, cashew so you mulch the entire farm with compost manure to decrease weed growth and save moisture now how do you take care of pests and diseases in the cashew farm root and stem borer tea mosquito leaf miner and other pests are among the pests and diseases of cashew twig and floral shoot die back root rot and other diseases also affect cashew pesticides and insecticides should be used and resistant type should be planted that means you plant resistant cashew don't go and plant cashew that is not resistant and then every time they are falling sick they are not doing very well to discover how to utilize them oil how to utilize new oil to combat pests and illnesses you may want to read more in on this youtube channel i'm going to make that available so neem oil can be used to take care of that and also pepper can also be used to you grow pepper on the cashew plant also um, it also helps to remove um, uh, it also helps to remove the wheat from the plant now why should you begin cashew farming that is a big question and um, i've spoken about that already in my introduction why should you go into cashew farming what is the benefit in cashew farming what is the in thing what is the big deal about cashew farming it is a long-term investment with a potential return of more than 50 years the best product of cashew farming is the cashew nut it is not the fruit it's not the succulent part the nut is very very important it is very very nutritious the rich people in advanced countries where they have money they are looking for the nut because of the nutritious value however you can make more money by processing the up the um the cashew the apple aspect into juice into fruit juice the nuts are in high demand 
and the price doubles every year, making it a very profitable business because the bulk of those who deal with cashew nuts are exporters. The price is usually established in dollars. So people, cashew is being exported in large quantities. In fact, the cashew that we consume in Nigeria is less than the cashew that is being exported. So more cashew, about 80 to 90 percent of cashew in Nigeria are being exported. Some are just taken in the farm and they are thrown away. Some are processed and are sold as cashew nuts in big supermarkets and on the in busy on busy roads. When people now go on busy road, you see granite is hundred naira. The same quantity of cashew they tell you is three hundred, is four hundred, is five hundred. So people go for the granite, but the cashew, why is it expensive? It it is very very nutritious. This is the main reason why the cashew is very very expensive and. The bulk of those who deal with cashew nuts are exporters. The price is usually established in dollars. How much is a dollar today to a naira? A dollar today is about 570 in the black market, though in the, um, in the official market, on the official bank rate is 414 to 415 naira. But the cashew season lasts three to four months. So what this means is that for three months, you will just be harvesting money, harvesting money, harvesting money, because the cashew is money. Not just investing money, you are investing dollars because the international brand is, is, is sold in the international market, so it is sold in dollar. You choose money, you choose or you pick money for four months out of the year. That's what cashew farming is all about. Now, let me talk about cashew nuts harvesting and drying. How do you harvest cashew nuts and then how, how do you dry it? Now, what you do is late in January, the ripe fruit begins to fall. They begin to fall on their own. Make sure the area around the trees are clear. So you have to clear the trees. Some of the leaves also will have fallen. So you clear the trees around the area. Make sure the area is clear before the trees begin to drop their fruits to allow for optimal picking of raw cashew nuts. Remove grasses and other weeds from surrounding the tree. Surrounding of the tree. When the fruits fall, it indicates that it has reached maturity. To avoid quality loss, Pick the nuts within two to three days of them falling. Instead of the, the um, cashew nut falling on the floor, on the soil, why can't you make a bag? You get sack, sack of rice, sack of beans, sack of yam, sack of flour, sack of different food items that are in sack. Get the old sack, then you sew them together. They will become big. It forms a mass. Then you can spread it on the floor of the cashew tree so that some can fall in there. Alternatively, you may not do that. Let them fall on their own and then you, you pick them up. You get farmers and you get your workers to pick them up for you. Or you get some young ones, they'll pick it up and then they'll put it somewhere where you want it to be and then they gather it for you. So to avoid, when it falls on its own, it means it has matured. So you can go to the tree and shake it to fall more or you can allow a large number to fall on their own and then you pick. The best thing is once you start falling, you pick, you shake the tree and allow it to fall and then you pick it and then you have to take it off in two to three days. If you don't do that, you start to lose quality. Remove the succulent part from the knot using a sharp knife. The quality of the knot would be harmed by ineffective detachment. So if you don't detach it properly, you affect the quality of the knot. If the quality of the knot, if the knot is wounded, it's going to affect the garbage that are going to buy it from you also. So the quality of the knot will be harmed by ineffective detachment. To achieve even drying, place them on a clean surface and turn them frequently. Drying them indoors will create a delay in drying, because which can lead to deterioration because of the risk of, of rust. Do not dry them on the metallic surface. So you dry them on a non-metallic surface. When the nuts are completely dry, they make a rattling sound when turned. It may take a few days to dry, such as two to three days, but always bring them inside at doors to minimize moisture getting into the nut. When you put them outside to dry during the day, at night bring them in because during the, day, during the night there will be condensation and some water are going to mist, are going to start falling on them again, and the dew are going to start falling on them, and then they're going to be um, gathering moisture. So how then do we store cashew nuts? 
You store cashew nuts in jute bags, other than containers, sacks, plastics, or other similar materials. Stitch the jute bag to keep it from sp spoiling or spilling. Place the bags on wooden pallets in a dry, well-ventilated area. Avoid placing them on the floor to avoid moisture absorption. So don't place your jute bag on the floor so that it will not absorb moisture from the floor. Put them on a wooden surface which could, uh, the floor, when they absorb moisture, they can start getting spoiled again. So that's why you avoid that. Allow 0.5 meter between each bag for proper air circulation. So the bag should not be stacked together. Give space between the bags so that some air can be able to flow. Then you sell the nuts within one year of harvesting to avoid spoilage still or to avoid deterioration. Within one year of harvesting, you sell the nuts. Now let's go into um, cashew nut roasting instruction. How do you know how do you roast cashew? That is what I want to talk to you about now. How do you roast the cashew after you have processed after everything has been done? Set up a fire and, and uh, with a wire gauze over it. Then equally distribute the nuts and allow the heat from the heat fire to roast them. Don't let them burn. That means you have to be stirring them occasionally or frequently. When the nuts are done, they will have a lovely flavor. You get that flavor coming out of it. You can take one out to inspect. Continue roasting them in batches until you until you've used up all of the nuts. To roast nuts, put salt or, or even oil on them for flavor. Cashew nuts can also be roasted in the oven. So you can roast it in the oven. For modern day cashew nut sellers, cashew nut uh, producers, or cashew nut businessmen today, they don't do that. They don't do it by roasting on the fire. They use oven to roast it. Now, how do you market your cashew nuts? How is cashew nut marketed? Finding companies that buy them for export is uh, most of these companies associated in Lagos. And I can help you to contact some of them. I will do a video showing the contact of some of these cashew nut sellers that are dependable. Some people are fake uh, cashew nut uh, marketers. They get your cashew nut and they keep posting you, they keep telling you stories that they've not bought it, yeah, the ship has not moved, they've not paid them. So we I can recommend standard and um, trusted cashew nut marketers to you. In Nigeria, Lagos, Indian cashew firms have a strong presence. You can also sell directly to international buyers. Check, if you check online, international buyers are available, you can sell directly to them. But definitely somebody must put you through, must link you so that you will not fall into the wrong hands. You can get information about cashew nut on this YouTube channel as I keep bringing that information to you week in and uh, week out. So I'm going to, if you contact me, I'm going to give you a load down of cashew nut sellers and where you can sell your cashew to in the international market. Trusted dealers that are that we know and that are into it and, and have integrity. We're going to recommend them to you as you go on. We're going to do that. Now you, you discuss with them and then you strike a deal. You can check online for the current price of cashew so that even though I recommend people to you, they will not cheat you. You can market it online for distributors and suppliers to come and buy from you if you don't want to go through um, the stress of any other individual. But it's, the process, it's, it's in the processing that the real money is. That is, when you process the cashew, that is when you make the real money. The raw cashew not sells for a fraction of the price of the processed kernel. So if they sell a, the raw cashew for 5,000, maybe a bag, 10,000 or 15 or 20,000 or 30,000, the processed one that they have processed, they will not buy it at that amount. They will buy it maybe so 5,000, they buy it for 50,000 or 100,000 because it is processed. Then there are different breeds of cashew that you can plant. The Jumbo hybrid, for example, is a hybrid cashew nut that matures and produces fruits in three years. 
For example, 350 Naira is a seedling of a cashew plant. That is um, the current price, but as dollar is increasing, that's the current price as at as the time I was making this video. But the price dollar keep increase, increasing, it also affects the, um, the price that the seedlings are sold. And season also affects it. Once it gets to rainy season, when the cashew planting period comes, the price shoots up. Medium and, and uh, small seedlings have also been improved. What are the risks of cashew farming? Cashew aids fire. <coughs> so if a fire catches the farm, the cashew will not do well. Therefore, in the event of a fire, the investment is lost. The farm has you don't need to mismanage your farm, you manage the farm properly and you are trying not as well to avoid natural calamities. This put between communities or over land or over anything. You try to avoid that. These are some of the risks of cashew. When you, you buy a land from the community, there's a dispute over land and you have planted cashew on it. Somebody now say the person that sold the land to you is not the owner and now come and remove your cashew from the land. So you all those are risks. But what you can do is also to romance the new owner, to romance the people in dispute. You don't have to take any side. So you romance them and let them see on the see reason with you why they should support you. How much does it cost to start a cashew business? I think this is what you have been waiting for. How much does it cost to start a cashew business in Nigeria? In the community, lands cost between 100000 to 150000 In some communities, it can be 10000 can be 20000 can be 30000 depending on your location. In my village, if I want to plant cashew now, I may not be able, I may not, I may get land for free. I have a family land we can use for free. But am I the one want to go and plant a cashew in the village? That is left for me. Do you want to go and plant your own cashew in your own village? That is left for you. Now you are in the, in the, in the city and you want to plant a cashew close by, close by you. What do you do? You go to the outskirts. Go to the outskirts and go in, 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 and then where people are not building houses, you buy the land. You can buy up to a hectare. You can buy, there was a time, a plot of land around where I am was sold for uh, 40,000 some two years ago. And uh, it's just about um, 30 to one hour drive from where I am, from the city, from the capital. And they sell land in that place for uh, 40,000 Naira. And uh, some places 50, some places 60, some places 70. By the way, if you want to buy land around where I am, I can be of help to you. And um, if you want to buy land anywhere around Quara, around Ilori, especially on the outskirts of Ilori, Axis, I can be of help to you and um, help you to get good land that uh, can be well kept. Now, you can get land for between 100 to 150,000 per hectare. So it depends on the community. It depends on so many factors. It depends on where you are. It depends on the development going on in the place. You can get it cheaper. You can get it more expensive. So it depends. So do your research. A survey of 100,000 to 200,000 uh, can be conducted. So um, it depends on you. Then you can spend 150,000 to 250,000 for clearing and for plowing and for scoring. Then um, you can uh, get the seedling for um, 350 naira per seedling and you get 100 seedlings, that's 35,000. If it's 500 naira per seedling, uh, for 100 seedling is 50,000. If it's um, 1,000 naira per seedling, for 100 seedling, that is 100,000. So you, you have to um, discuss the seedling price and I advise you to get the best variety that can produce, give you fruit in three years, in two years. Recently, um, somebody came to me from uh, RIT in Ibadan and he told me he had some seedlings to sell and I bought the banana uh, seedling. The banana seedling, I bought, he said in six months, it will start um, producing fruit and it does not grow too tall. So it's short, it's this hybrid. It's going to produce very large amount of um, banana, uh, banana um, after six months, it will start fruiting. So I got two from him and I planted it somewhere around me. So when that comes up, I want to see, demonstrate that and then. So if you want to get any kind of seedling, you can contact me. I can link you up and um, you can that can be some of the benefit of you 
coming on my YouTube channel. Now, after you've gotten the seedling, what else do you do? You <clears throat> you go into the you plant. So you you can plant, um, you can budget ten thousand to hundred thousand for planting. It depends on the type of labor that you want. Um, it can be more and it can be less. As of the time I'm doing this video, these are approximate values. So when you are ready, the values may differ. So you have to just do your own research. To find out what the current prices are, you must conduct an impartial survey and investigation. You can also post your comments in the comment section below asking any question, asking about the current price, and I'm going to do that research and I'm going to give you. So um, what do I have to say again? Let us get started right now. Let's get started right now. Let's get started right now. Let's do it. Let's go. This is a time for you to go into cashew production. Don't leave this business to only the wealthy people. If you are looking at, ah, cashew, 100,000, where will I get it from? You have friends. Why can't you gather the friends and sit them down, down and watch this video together? You don't have 100,000, your, your friend have 10, your friend have 5, your friend have 3, your friend have 15, your friend have 20, your friend have 30, your friend have 40. Put those money together and start the farm. It's like, it's like um, you, are, you are shareholders in it. When it starts yielding, you sell, you share the money. In fact, it's going to be great. So I'm going to talk to you another time. Please, I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have close to 2,000 subscribers at today. I want to grow the channel to 3,000 subscribers. That's the next thing. Now, apart from that, I want you to like this video. And apart from that, I want you to share this video. Let many more people know there are, there's opportunity in our land here. When I discovered that China Chinese people are coming to Nigeria to farm, that is when I decided that I'm going to also go into the nitty gritty of farming. People from China, they come to Nigeria, they buy the land or they, they get the land, they farm in large quantity, they get the produce, they take it back to China. Nigerians, wake up and also go into farming. So I am going to go into a series of farming um, activities this time. So this is how you can start cashew farming. After you, you can go into plantain farming. You can go into banana plant by farming and plantation. You can go into poultry, layers, broilers. You can go into rabbitry. You can go into even dog keeping. These uh, exotic dogs, you breed them and then you sell them at very high price. You can go into the rabbit, production of rabbit. You can do a lot of things. Pineapple is there. You can go into it. Pawpaw is there. You can go into it also. Even tomato planting. You have land. See, any land around your house, any land, don't let it go. Even if you don't have land in your house, get sack. Check my YouTube channel. Um, I talk about sack farming. I planted, currently, we have okra planted everywhere in sack. Now, as I'm recording this video, it's dry season. We will irrigate it. I will plant the okra. Our okra is coming out. Why people are saying that okra has gone? Okra has not gone. No. Okra is available. So you can plant in sacks. Then there's a lot that you can do. My name again is Olu Bengale I'm your host on this YouTube channel. I'm not just, just, not just your host. I am your happy host. Information is key. I have given you the information today. It is now left for you to go and get started. The ball is now in your court. The ball is now in your court for you to start something. I make a boast. If you watch my channel religiously for one year and you don't gain anything, don't watch the channel again. If you subscribe and after one year you don't gain anything, stop watching the channel. Your life must change. Your life must improve. Somebody saw me sometime and said, ah, you are so so person. I said, yes, I'm the one. I am the one. I'm the one behind the YouTube channel and things are getting better every day. And if you take action also based on the information I'm sharing with you, things are going to get better with you. I'm going to come away again some other time. Again, my name is Ulubinga Aditun. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share my video with others. I am going to come to your way again. Bye bye for now.